Hello everyone, and welcome back to this journey in differential equations. Today we're going to be focusing our attention on two particular differential equations that both are nonlinear equations, that both have one, a way to solve it using a substitution process, and another that sort of gives some insight into the relationship between um, the family of solutions for um, higher order and also nonlinear equations, um, which we'll definitely get into more in detail later on. So let's just outline a couple of the structures of differential equations that we have already explored in detail. So the first order linear ordinary differential equations, uh, generally speaking, even if they're not linear, can be written in the form y prime is equal to f x, y, and if we want to make this an initial value problem, all we need to do is just mandate that that particular relation satisfies some initial condition, y, x, zero is equal to y, zero. So actually, let's just delete that linear word since it need not be linear, um, because we can actually write off first order, first order linear ordinary differential equations, we can always write them in the form y prime is equal to a0x plus a1x times y. So how can we solve this? Let's just do a quick review. So we can always write um, this particular structure into the form y prime minus a1x times y is equal to a0x, and this is usually what we represent or call standard form of the first order linear equation. So what we can do is we can multiply both sides by an integrating factor, in particular f of x is equal to e to the minus integral of a1x with respect to x and choose the arbitrary constant c to be equal to zero. And then we can say, okay, well that's just going to be equal to the derivative with respect to x of f of x times y is equal to f of x times a0x. We can integrate, we can find that arbitrary constant c that comes up in that integrating factor, provided that we have an initial condition to uh, use. Right? So that's how we can solve first order linear equations. So today, the first equation that I want to introduce is what is referred to as Bernoulli's equation. So a Bernoulli, ordinary differential equation. And these are equations that can be written in the form y prime is equal to a1x times y plus anx times y to the power of n, where n is a natural number that is bigger than 1. Right? So this is a non-linear term because of that unknown solution y to some arbitrary power m, right? So this is an example of a nonlinear equation, right? And keep in mind, we can rewrite this equation in the form y prime plus axy is equal to bx times y to the power of m. Right. So we get this particular structure. Now we do have a couple uh, special, or at least one special case that you should be able to identify. So if n is equal to zero, we get the equation y prime plus axy is equal to bx, which is just our first order, first order linear ordinary differential equation, which we already know how to solve. And if n is equal to 1, then we can do something else. So if n is equal to 1, then we have the equation y prime plus axy is equal to bxy, which is the same thing as writing y prime plus ax minus bx times y is equal to 0, which is a uh, first order first order homogeneous ordinary differential equation, which we definitely know how to solve because that's going to be a separable equation, right? So that's why we consider the case uh, that n is bigger than one, in particular, a natural number. You can sort of consider the case where n is not a natural number and you'll get some interesting results there, but let's assume that n is a natural number here. So what we're going to do is we're going to consider the structure um, y prime is equal to 
uh, a one x y plus a n x times y to the power of n for n bigger than one. Notice that we do not have an a zero x term, which is the uh, non-homogeneous portion of the typical first order linear homogeneous differential equation, right? Um, so we have this particular structure, right? Um, which we're going to work in the form y prime plus a x y is equal to bxy to the power of n. I think this form is a little bit more easier to deal with. Okay, so the trick to solve a Bernoulli differential equation is to start off with doing a substitution. In particular, we're going to be letting u be equal to y to the one minus n. And from here on, I'm going to call this a Bernoulli substitution. So we're going to be using a Bernoulli substitution to solve Bernoulli differential equations. I think that um, is a nice terminology addition. So if what u is equal to y to the 1 over n, y minus uh, 1 minus m, we need a different representation for dy over dx, right? So if we take the derivative of u with respect to x, via the chain rule, we're going to have 1 minus m times y to the power of 1 minus n minus 1 times the derivative of that interior relation with respect to x. So 1 minus n minus 1, that's just going to be equal to minus n. So we're just going to be left with du dx is equal to 1 minus n times y to the minus n times dy over dx. And of course, we can solve this relation for dy over dx. And we're going to have dy over dx is equal to y to the positive m divided by 1 over n. And that's going to be multiplied by the differential of u divided by the differential of x. And we obviously see that n cannot be equal to 1 for this particular substitution method, which we're not assuming to be possible because we're assuming n is bigger than 1. So if that is the case, we're going to use that, of course. Um, keep in mind u was defined to be equal to y to the power of 1 minus n, which can also be decomposed of y to the power of 1 times y to the minus n, or simply just y times y to the minus n. We're going to use this as well. So if u is equal to y times y to the minus n, you can, of course, get the relation that y is just equal to u times y to the positive power of n. We're going to be using this substitution as well. Right? So let us go back to our original differential equation, y prime plus axy is equal to bx times y to the power of n. So we have a different representation for y prime, because y prime is just going to be equal to y to the power of n divided by 1 minus n times the derivative of u with respect to x plus a of x times y, which is just the same as u times y to the power of n, as I just derived up front. And that's going to be equal to b of x times, I'm going to keep this yn on the right hand side, because notice that yn is a common factor on both sides of this equation, and therefore we're going to eliminate that off, right? So those cancel, and those cancel, and those cancel as well. So what are we going to be left with? So once I multiply both sides by that fraction, 1 over 1 minus n, I'm going to have du divided by dx plus 1 minus n times ax times u is equal to just the lonely bx on the right-hand side times 1 minus m, right? So if I rename this function as, for example, alpha x, and I rename this function on the right-hand side as beta of x, then I have the differential equation u prime plus alpha x u is equal to beta x. And what type of equation do we have here? Well, this is just going to be a first order linear ordinary differential equation. And arbitrarily speaking, we're assuming that b is non-zero. So this equation is, of course, going to be a homogeneous equation. So once we have this first order linear ordinary differential equation, then we're going to, for example, have u of x is equal to something on the right hand side. But keep in mind, we weren't solving for u, we were solving for y, right? Because keep in mind, u is equal to y to the 1 minus n. So we just need to take the 1 minus nth root of both sides of this equation. And we're going to have y is equal to the 1 minus nth root 
of g of x. And that will be your exact solution um, for the original Bernoulli's equation. Let's work through a couple examples to sort of make sure that we understand the theoretical aspects for which we just derived and proven. Let's see if we can use the theory that we just went through in order to solve this particular differential equation. So a couple of things off the start we can see. This is definitely a first order differential equation and it does have this nonlinear term of y cubed. So since it's not a first order linear differential equation, um, we hope that this differential equation is of some structure that we know how to solve, right? Hopefully, since it's nonlinear. So let's just rearrange this and I'm gonna just start by solving for the y prime term. So I'm gonna have y prime plus one over x times y is equal to x to the power of three times y to the power of three. So what we have here, if we start naming some things, is y prime, some function of x times y, is equal to some function of x times y to the power of n, where n is equal to 3. So this particular structure we already have named, this is just a Bernoulli ordinary differential equation with n is equal to 3, and we already know how to solve this particular type of nonlinear equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with our Bernoulli substitution, which is u is equal to y to the power of 1 minus n, which in this case is y to the power of 1 minus 3, which is the same as y to the minus 2. Right? So we need a representation for y prime and also y. So in this expression, we have that u is equal to y times y to the minus 3, which means that y is the same as u times y to the positive 3. So that's the first thing that we need in order to translate this equation into a differential equation in terms of u and x only. The next term, the y prime, can be obtained by implicit differentiation of this u is equal to y to the minus 2 term. So the derivative of u with respect to x is going to be equal to minus 2 times y to the minus 3 times the derivative of y with respect to x. So once we isolate this expression, we're going to have y prime is equal to minus 1 half y to the positive 3 times u prime, and that gives us our next expression. So our original differential equation was y prime plus 1 over x times y is equal to x cubed times y cubed. Using these two substitutions that we've derived here, what we have is y prime, which is another name for minus 1 half y cubed u prime, plus 1 over x times y, which has a new name, u times y cubed, and that's going to be equal to x cubed times y cubed. So, obviously, if you look at all three of these terms, we do have a y cubed term in common with all of them. If you do this correctly, that will always be the case for a Bernoulli's equation. And once we simplify that expression, what do we have left? So we have minus one half u prime plus one over x times u is equal to x cubed, which is a first order linear and homogeneous differential equation in terms of u and x only. So if we translate this linear differential equation into standard form, we're going to have u prime minus 2 over x times u is equal to minus 2x cubed. And in order to solve the inhomogeneous case, we need to multiply both sides of this equation by the integrating factor, which is going to be e to the integral of whatever that function is in front of u. So it's going to be minus 2 over x dx, which is going to turn into e to the minus 2 natural log of x, which is e to the natural log of x to the minus 2, which is just x to the minus 2. So that's our integrating factor. Once we have that, then we just multiply both sides by this integrating vector and hope for the best. So we're going to have x to the minus 2, so x to the minus 2 times u prime minus 2 over x, x minus 2 times u is equal to minus 2 x3, x minus 2. Okay, so what we have here is x to the minus 2 and then minus 2 x minus 3 times u is equal to, and let's not forget our u prime there, and that's going to be equal to minus 2x to the positive 1. All right, so on the left-hand side, we should have a backwards product rule, and indeed we do, because that's just precisely the derivative with respect to x of x to the minus 2 times u, and that's going to be equal to minus 2x. 
So once we have that, we multiply both sides by the differential of x and then integrate, so which is going to give us x to the minus 2 times u is equal to minus, what is that going to be? So that's going to be minus x squared plus some arbitrary constant c, right? Which is our implicit solution for our differential equation in terms of u and x. Right. Let's multiply both sides by x to the power of positive 2. That's going to give us u is equal to um, x to the power of 4 plus cx squared. Right. So our original differential equation was not in terms of u, it was in terms of y. And the substitution we made that translation from was u to the y to the power of 1 minus 3, which is the same as y to the minus 2. So let's just replace that back. So that means we're going to have y to the minus 2 is equal to x to the fourth plus cx squared. And then we can reciprocate both sides of this equation because they're both over 1. So we're going to have y to the positive power of 2 is equal to 1 divided by, um, let's write it as, uh, we're missing a minus sign, are we not? because that should be minus x to the fourth. So let's not forget that. So that means we can write this as cx squared minus x to the power of four. And this is our implicit solution. That's our implicit solution. You can introduce square roots and absolute value um, functions if you want, but I think that is a nice solution to the original uh, Bernoulli differential equation, which we saw via Bernoulli substitutions. The next differential equation that we're going to look at is very similar um, to the Bernoulli equation when n is equal to 2. Um, so in some sense it's a special condition, but it also includes that constant function of x term that we didn't have in the Bernoulli equation case, right? So it's a pseudo extension, sub extension of the Bernoulli equation. Regardless of how you call it, let's state what it is. So the Riccati equation is also a first order differential equation, and it's going to have a function of x only without any y terms, plus your linear term for y, and then your quadratic term for y squared. All right, so here we have our nonlinear term, and we have our linear term, or our linear terms over here, right? So in some sense, it's one of the more general uh, quadratic first order nonlinear differential equations you could consider. Now there are a few special cases that are worth mentioning here. So let's just see if we can list them out here. So special case number one, let us assume that a2x is equal to zero. When a2x is equal to zero, what type of equation do you have? So if a2x is equal to zero, that's going to delete your nonlinear term, so you're just going to be left with a first order linear ordinary differential equation. So we know how to solve special case one. So special case two, if both a2 and a0 are both equal to zero, what do you have then? So it's obviously going to be a first order linear, but it's going to be a first order linear homogeneous ordinary differential equation, um, which is a special case of separable differential equations. Keep in mind separable does not imply linear, um, but first order linear homogeneous does imply separable. So that's one case. Here's our third case. If we just have a zero x is equal to zero, what are we going to be left with then? So let's actually take a look at that. So we're going to have y prime is equal to a one x y plus a two x y squared. Well, if we rewrite this equation, we're going to have y prime minus a one x y is equal to a two x y squared. And if we start renaming things, for example, that is alpha and that is beta, then what we're going to have is y prime plus alpha xy is equal to beta xy to the power of 2. And we should already know what type of dis differential equation this is. This is just a Bernoulli n is equal to 2 ordinary 
differential equation, which of course is a special um, case of the generalized um, Bernoulli equation, which allows n to be more than 2, of course. Right? So that is, you know, some special cases of the Riccati equation. But can we solve the Riccati equation for arbitrary a0, a1, and a2? Okay, so let's look, put a little note here. So generally, the solutions of Riccati equations, not considering special cases 1, 2, and 3, are not usually, I'm going to put easy in quotes here. We'll solve it eventually analytically, but there is. There is one useful theorem that connects their solutions, which we will look at today. Because usually, in our family of solutions for differential equations, they usually vary uh, by some constant c, but that isn't always the case. Sometimes if you have one solution, it can actually help you find what the other solutions might be directly, and that's practically what this theorem uh, that we'll close off with today um, actually says. So this theorem says the following. Suppose we consider the differential equation y prime is equal to a0x plus a1xy plus a2xy squared, right, which is the Riccati equation. And let u be any solution to this ODE, right? So that is, let us assume that you've happened to find a particular solution to this differential equation, and let's assume that you've named it u. Then y equals u plus 1 over v will transform this equation into a linear equation in v. Right, So y is going to represent the solution or a bigger solution to the original differential equation. So if we happen to know this particular solution u, and we use this substitution y is equal to u plus 1 over v, it's going to turn it into a linear equation in v, which we already know how to solve. And then what you're going to have is you're going to have a better solution to the Riccati equation that is a linear combination of both the first solution that you knew and the solution to this linear equation v that you get from this particular theorem. So that is the solutions u and v are related via this particular weird linear combination. So let's see if we can go ahead and prove this beautiful and analytical result. And then later on in this series, we'll revisit this problem and figure out how we can actually find a particular solution u. So let's write our Riccati equation, y prime is equal to a0x plus a1xy plus a2xy squared as just a0 plus a1y plus a2y squared, where it's understood that a0, a1, and a2 are all functions of x. Let's see if we can prove this nice little linear combination theorem associated to this Riccati equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume the assumptions of the theorem. So let us assume u is any solution to this Riccati ordinary differential equation. So if it is a solution to this differential equation, that means the derivative of u must be equal to a0 plus a1 times u plus a2 times u squared. That's what it means for it to be a solution, right? And now what we're going to do is we're going to consider the substitution consider this substitution, y is equal to u plus 1 over v for some unknown v, which is of course going to be a function of x, because if u is a function of x and y is a function of x, that means v is a function of x too, right? Because u is known and u is in terms of v, right? So if that is the case, then what will we have? 
So if y is equal to u plus 1 over v, then the derivative of y is going to be equal to u, and then we're going to use the quotient rule or a reverse chain rule on this 1 over v, and that's going to give us minus 1 over v squared times the derivative of that v, which is going to be equal to v prime. And once we have this particular expression, we can solve for u, so u is going to be equal to y prime plus v prime divided by v squared. So we get some nice um, terms to sort of translate our y equation into a potential u and more of a v equation in the end. Okay. All right, so now we're going to use the assumption um, that y is a solution to our differential equation. Keep in mind that y prime was equal to a0 plus a1y plus a2y squared for all solutions y. And y prime is another way of write, writing u minus v prime over v squared in terms of the substitution. So we're going to have u prime minus v prime over v squared, and that's going to be equal to a0 plus a1y plus a2y squared. And keep in mind that's just another way of writing y prime. But now we have a connection between u, v, and y in the same exact equation. Keep in mind we're using the substitution that y is equal to u plus 1 over v, so we can just substitute that into the right side of this particular equation substitution. So once we have that, we're going to have u prime minus v prime over v squared, and that's going to be equal to a0 plus a1y plus a2y squared. Okay, so we're just going to expand and distribute accordingly, and then we're going to get some uh, nice things that cancel, hopefully. So u prime minus v prime over v squared will be equal to a0 plus a1u plus a1 times 1 over v. And then we're going to have a2u squared plus a2 times 2u over v plus a2 1 over v squared, right? So one thing that you notice, we have an a0 plus a1u uh, plus a2u squared, which is the same thing as u prime. And since that's the same as u prime, we can actually cancel that from both sides of this equation. So we can actually make that equation a little bit more nicer to look at. So once we simplify that equation with that cancellation, we're going to have minus v prime over v squared will be equal to a1 times 1 over v, and then we're going to have, what else? We're going to have plus 2a2u over v, and plus a2 1 over v squared. Notice that all of our uh, fractions have v in them, so I'm just going to multiply both sides of this equation by v squared, just to get rid of that ugliness. So we're going to have minus v prime is equal to a1v plus 2a2uv plus a2. Right? So this equation looks fairly nice. Um, but what else can we sort of make out of this? Well, notice that v can be factored out of these two terms. Uh, so we can actually move our minus v prime to the right hand side. Let's actually move our a2 to the left hand side. So on the positive v prime side, we're going to have v prime plus uh, a1x, let's switch back into x form, plus 2a2xu times v. And actually, let's write u as u of x, because keep in mind, u we know. And then v is going to be equal to minus a2x. And what exactly do we have here? So I'm going to call this bracketed term alpha x, and I'm going to call this term over here beta x. So once we have that, then we have the v prime plus alpha x v is equal to beta x, and this is what type of equation? That's a first order linear inhomogeneous ordinary differential equation, which we know how to solve 
via integration factors. Right? So we know how to solve that. So let's assume that v, our solution, is going to be equal to some function of x. Let's call it fancy f of x. So once we have v f of x, keep in mind we said that y is equal to u plus 1 over v, which in this particular case is going to be u plus 1 over fancy function f. Right? And that would be a more general solution compared to the particular solution that we originally started with. Right? So that gives us some insight about the solutions to Riccati equations in, in the sense that they are going to be related to each other. That is, if you know one, you can find the other one, which is actually very, very beautiful, um, because in some sense the other one is related to it via a different differential equation that is not nonlinear. That it, well, it's not nonlinear, right? Yeah, that's correct. All right. So that is the Bernoulli equation, which we can always solve, and the Riccati equation, which definitely gives us uh, some solution strategies associated to nonlinear nonlinear differential equations. All right. So we will revisit this Riccati equation a little bit later and figure out how we can find this particular solution u. Um, but we need a couple more uh, algebraic machinery details uh, to work out until then. All right. But until then, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.